Good morning. Today we will be talking about templates and standard template library. Templates are one of the core features of C++ that provide performance while they provide convenience to the user. So we will learn the definition and specification and usage of templates. Then we will learn how to simplify the specification of types in C++ as they can be very lengthy. And lastly, we'll have a closer look at the standard template library, providing examples. So what is a template? Well, it's basically a recipe for code, like you can have a template for a function or a class with all its member functions and data members. So templates allow you to reuse the coding pattern for different data types in particular. The compiler applies templates at compile time, which provides this performance. And therefore, however, you must provide templates in header files. Example, where you might want to use such a recipe. And you have a function that adds two numbers. Well, it, those numbers could be integer, they could be float, they could be complex numbers, or whatever. You may have a vector class or an abstract data type that stores a certain type, right? So in, in C, we have realized this often by using generic pointers like void star pointers, which made it a bit inflexible when we tried to pull data out of such a container. Here in C++ we can use templates and templates provide this kind of coding pattern, but in a type safe fashion. So when we talk about templates, we must understand and contrast them to overloading of functions or methods. So normally when you overload a method, such an overloaded method should perform a similar kind of functionality, but maybe using different logic. Like when you say a car should move, have a move function, and, uh, we, and, and another bicycle has a move method. Whenever you call the move method, it should do something revolving around move, right? So the logic is different, but the kind of semantics is the same. Here in templates, we have basically the same logic and the same semantics, but for different data types. So a template is generally preferable versus class overloading when you have the same logic, and particularly when you are not dealing with objects. Oh, but it works for objects as well. Okay, so how can we create a function template and give you a first example? So we have to use the angle brackets for specifying a template. So what we have here is a function maximum, which takes two arguments x and y of a type t. And this function maximum returns also the data type t. So what is t? Well, t is defined by now what we call this template as a type name. So I say here, I want to specify a template which uses a type t, and t is not clear what it is when I declare this template. Yeah, You will see what it means. So it could be integer, it could be double, but whatever it is, it means all the t's here, they basically become this data type. So if t would be integer, all those t's that you see in this function logic declaration would be integer. So then we create a temporary variable of the type t again, we call m, and if x is smaller than y, well m shall be y, otherwise m shall be x, and lastly I return m. So this function now is able to create and calculate the maximum for different data types. So when I call this function in my code, such as maximum a and a here, using the character literals, the type will be car. So it means basically the function maximum will be car, maximum car x, car y. If I call it with double precision numbers, like here in this example, they will become double, maximum double x, double y. Now that is convenient, it works together with the idea that we can overload functions, of course, because that's a necessity. I have the two functions that have the same name but a different signature. But the different key difference is that I don't have to create those functions manually. The compiler will instantiate and call the appropriate function automatically for me once it knows this template specification. So that's really syntactic sugar and prevents me to have to create you know, tens of different maximum functions for each different data type. 
So there is a certain set of language involved and terminology that we should understand. We talk about specialization, which is the code when you get, when you substitute in a template the arguments with a specific type. Right? So here we have, in this example here, we have this template. We have one specialization where T, our type of this template, was car. So this is a specialization. And another specialization is when I replace T with double. Okay, so those are specializations. Next is instantiation. That's actually the act of creating now a specialization out of a template. And this means to define the class and function. Okay, so it means basically to create this template, which is first of all abstract, and now actually create the code like here by replacing our template arguments with the appropriate type. Yeah, and, and this code is of course then existing, such if I would have manually defined my function like here car maximum and another function like car maxi a double maximum, like this here. So there are a couple of options that we have here as a programmer. First of all, the most convenient one is if I have automatic specialization and instantiation. So what it means is that at compile time, the, co the compiler identifies which actual types did I put in to such a template function and then the compiler instantiates a specialization based on those templates and based on the data types that I've specified, right? So that was kind of what we used here. When I gave maximum two double numbers, the compiler knew, oh, T, because T is here the argument, T must be a double number. So that's why it knows what to instantiate and what to specialize. So everything works man automatically and that's the typical case. There's also the option that I manually, which means explicitly, specialize a template for a certain data type. That means now I ch may have to change the logic a little bit sometimes for one or two data types, while for most the logic stays the same. So the, the programmer in this case provides our code that is then used by the compiler and instantiated by the compiler if needed. Lastly, I can manually also instantiate a type if I want. So I can say I want to instantiate this function maximum like with this signature, albeit I'm not calling it at all. That's sometimes as well useful. Okay, so let's have a look at these different options and how they work and why we need them. Right, so in, in fact, for our, in our example with maximum, the compiler knew what data type to use based on the first argument. The first argument was of type T. The compiler in this example sees the first argument is a double number. So yeah, the function should be instantiated for double. So, and the, when e the first time the compiler sees that this function is needed for a double argument, it specializes and instantiates the code. But it has to do this only once, right? I can then use the maximum function as often as I like for different um, double arguments. So that's not different a little bit from C preprocessor macros, which would be replaced every time. So next, we could do this manual specialization, but still rely on the compiler to automatically instantiate the code. So if we would, for example, try to call maximum with an integer argument too, and then as a second argument a double value, it wouldn't work. Why not? Because the compiler would have seen the first argument here would be integer, so it would have said t is int, so it would have created int maximum int x int y. However, we see the second argument here is double, so it would not have worked. So what we could have done, we could have casted of course the third, first argument, or we can explicitly tell the compiler what specialization to use. So in this case, we tell the compiler, please use the maximum and instantiate the double version of it, of this template, and then we provide the arguments. So that works. You can also, lastly, we can manually instantiate the code if we want to. So when I provide, when I say template car maximum, here with the note, the angular, angle brackets, car car, then this function is, this code is specialized automatically by the compiler and then instantiated in this kind of line. So I may want to do this sometimes in CPP files to place a certain 
specialization there. So la the last case was when we manually have to sometimes create a specialization. So that is needed when the code logic differs for a specific data type. For example, in our maximum example, we may want to create a maximum for Boolean, for a Boolean type. And how do we do that? Well, if we know if both arguments are bool, then we can just return a or b. Yeah, so using our logic or operator here. And uh, yeah, when we provide this code to the compiler, the compiler will instantiate this code as needed. And uh, so it's, it knows when it reads this kind of declaration here and uh, the, the prospect template code um, that whenever I call maximum with a bool, well, I need to instantiate this specific template. So of course, this template specification needs to come after I have provided a generic template. That way, here the compiler knows the template takes no argument anymore and it, it is an instantiation for the maximum bool kind of template. So maximum for the maximum template with the bool um, specialization, okay?